2017 Premier League champions Chelsea playing 3-4-3 uh, three, three, and basically creating a 3-2-5 a system in, in attack, which is basically how Manchester City have won the league in the last two years, playing a different system, but creating a 3-2-5 a formation in attack. And the champions elect this year, Liverpool, also again creating that 3-2-5 uh, formation and attack, but with different players in different positions. With Antonio, we were um, Victor Moses as a right wing back, Aspiliqueta, David Luiz, Gary Cahill, Marcus Alonso, so one wing back more of a full back, the other wing back more of a winger. And behind the wing back that's more of a winger was a central defender who's more of a full back because he was going to need to be in these areas, these full back areas more often, so needed those attributes that, that a full back has. In midfield, uh, Kante and uh, Matic sometimes Fabregas, and then Diego Costa with Azad, Willian, Pedro as number 10s um, either side of the, of the striker. And basically what Antonio uh, tried to create was um, when we had the ball in second phase, which would be as, as the image is now on the, uh, on the pitch in front of me, the the number 10s would go inside and between the lines and the wing backs would play right up high in, in the same line as the forwards. So not 10, 20 meters lower, but in the same line. So basically five players in the same line in the offensive third of the pitch, which basically left three and two and, and the team was basically split into the five players that prepare the attacks to the, the five players whose, whose job it is to penetrate. And what, what happened um, in the early part of the season a lot was teams were playing with four defenders against the five. And as the image suggests, you, you get outnumbered five against four. So particularly let's say the ball is on this side of the pitch and being switched. The, the problem that, that this player had, the fullback had on the opposite side to the ball, when this player made this run, he wasn't sure whether to go with him to cover the run or whether he should be staying with the, the wing back who was wide on the other side. So a big, a big tactical dilemma, five against four, um, that was the challenge for every team we played, frankly. What ended up happening was um, in the second half of the season, once the team had gained serious momentum, was that more or less all the teams played five against the five, which solved the tactical problem. But of course, then you're playing with a back three, having had maybe one or two days to train it against a team where we'd been working on it all season. So a new system to try to cope with the problems that the Chelsea system um, provided. Where I see that similarly in the last few years in the Premier League would be Liverpool and um, Liverpool and Manchester City would both play more of a 4-3-3, so four defenders, pivot, two number eights and, a, and three forwards. And in Manchester City's case, the wingers would play very wide. Let me change that back to 4-4-2. The wingers would play very wide and there's the centre forward. The, the number eight, so De, De Bruyne, uh, Silva, would play right up again in that offensive line, creating five offensive players. 
here is where it's slightly different to the, the three and the two of Antonio's Chelsea. But with Delph coming inside for City or Walker playing more from position, not so much overlapping, you, you get that, that two and the three or can be the three and the two. Again, going back to um, the, the season where Delph played left back as a midfield player. So you've still got a similar structure. In counter-attack, you have three and two, so five always in good positions. Um, but, but five players in the same offensive line, making lots of runs into depth and asking lots of questions of full-backs and centre-backs, who to mark, whether to push in, whether to drop off. And of course, with the quality of player that um, Manchester City have, a, a big challenge for any team that, that plays against them. Liverpool see slightly differently in that so Liverpool's 4-3-3 so back four again pivot two eights and three forwards so Liverpool n not so much from uh, the midfield players in terms of offensive play more relevant that they can defend and they can work and they can cover fullbacks particularly both midfield players often dropping into fullback positions when they build. Um, but but it's the fullback. So this is Trent and this is Robertson. Again, you've got Mane and you've got Salah and you've got Firmino as, as three forwards. So there's that five again, that line of five that I talked about. Two central two two central defenders, and then three midfield players. So different to City, different to Chelsea but fundamentally the same principle. Two, three, five. Both uh, Milner, Wijnaldum, Henderson would also spend a lot of time dropping into these positions, one at a time normally, to receive the ball to again create that, that, that three, two, five. With, um, with the national team, um, we are or have been since Croatia away in the Nations League, we've been 4-3-3, um, but it, it, in different ways, we've managed to create a similar, uh, similar uh, is issue for the opponent. One is by playing with high number eights and wingers wide, um, and then fullbacks playing more positional, so 2-3-5. Another way um, that we've created something a little bit different is if the pivot drops between the two central defenders to form three at the back, and then both wing backs play really high. Again, going back to Antonio's wing backs now, very high, and the wingers play inside. Again, you get that three, two, five structure with now the pivot in between the two centre backs. So. What, what you're now dealing with is, are, are the players in the right places with, does it suit their individual qualities? Because if the wingers are better on the wing, then why move them inside, for example? Um, if the pivot isn't going to be good in counter-attacking situations when the opponent recovers the ball, if he can't cope in defensive situations, probably better he doesn't drop into those areas. But similar, similar principle and a different way of, of building in a 4-3-3. And the final way um, that we've tried with the senior team, so I'm comfortable sharing it with you because uh, it's not just one way, it, it's lots of different ways. So it, it's not like I'm giving away a secret. You can never be quite sure which way we're going to build. Um, but another way would be that if we had a particularly offensive right back and a, a left back who was more defensive, we would play with the left back in on one side, again creating that three I talked about. The right back here would be really high and again right in that offensive line. Right winger inside, centre forward. But now we have no left back high on this side, so it's the left winger on this side who needs to keep the width. And then the left side eight, which would be, let's say, more of a, a Barkley or um, a mount, 
uh, a Madison, a Deli Alley, that kind of player. Uh, so a more offensive midfield player out of the three would then play in that, that space between the lines, which again basically means that you're building with the three and the two and the, and the five. Um, so just some observations on modern football in the Premier League. Chelsea, Manchester City for two years and Liverpool this year, all very similar in the principle of what they're, they're trying to achieve with their attacking play uh, and some ways that we have um, moulded that within the 4-3-3, so different ways of building within the 4-3-3, uh, different ways of adapting to give different tactical problems to the opponent with the, uh, with the England senior team.